Okay, we talked in a past couple videos about what's required to form a dipole. I thought it'd be useful at this point to go through some examples specifically where dipoles are formed or not formed so that we could see how to apply those things. So we're going to go through methane, water, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. First of all, methane. We see, I looked up the boiling point of methane and saw that it was minus 162 degrees. That's really low. And what we're going to realize with these dipoles is that, the, that they're going to lead to more interaction between molecules and that leads to higher boiling points. So a boiling point at a hundred, minus 162 automatically makes me think we're going to have no dipole here. But let's just see how that works out. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to check two things. First of all, we need polar covalent bonds. And then we need an asymmetric shape. So for polar covalent bonds, we check the electronegativity difference, keeping in mind that it needs to be from 0 0.5 to 1.7. So for CH4, I have 2.55 is my electronegativity for carbon, and 2.20 my electronegativity for hydrogen. So my electronegativity difference here is 0 0.35, and that is not in our range. What that means is I do not have polar covalent bonds, and so I have no dipole. I don't need to check the shape of this molecule. There's no point. As soon as the bonds are not polar, there's no uh, bond that's trying to create, uh, trying to create any sort of dipole. So there's no point. Okay, water. Water's boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius, so that's quite high. So I'm fairly certain from that already that there must be some sort of interaction between these molecules. So I kind of know there's going to be a dipole, but let's just go through our two things and check. Step number one, our electronegativity difference. Um, 3.44 for oxygen. Hydrogen is 2.2. And so I have an electronegativity difference of 1.24. So that is nicely in the range. So I have polar bonds. Check. Also, the Lewis structure for water. We won't really predict the shape of molecules until we get into grade 12. So for now, if you're given a question like this, we kind of have to tell you what the shape looks like. And if I tell you that water forms this bent shape, where the two hydrogens are pushed down at the bottom by those uh, lone electron pairs, what we can see is that this shape is asymmetric. So we have an asymmetric shape and polar bonds, and that's how I know I have a dipole. In this case, the oxygen is the partially negative part, and the hydrogens are the partially positive part. Carbon dioxide. So we're going to go through that same again. First we'll check for polar bonds. Electronegativity difference. Oxygen is 3.44. Carbon is 2.55. So my difference here is 9. And then that becomes 3, 2. So 0 0.79. So am I within the range? Yep, I have polar bonds. Alternatively now, looking at the shape of carbon dioxide. Mr. Osborne, would you please contact extension 407, Mr. Osborne, 407. Carbon dioxide happens, uh, I'm obviously recording this in my school, so there's some announcements for you. I don't, I don't think that, I couldn't pause it in time to get rid of them, so, oh well, they're in there now. Uh, anyway. We're going to go through how I know that carbon dioxide follows this basic Lewis structure here in another video that we're going to do soon. But for the point right now, we can see, or we would be told, that carbon dioxide is linear, which means we have these two polar bonds, but the problem is they're pulling in completely opposite directions. So this is a case of a symmetric 
molecule. So yes, we have polar bonds, but unfortunately the shape of those polar bonds does not allow the dipole to form, so no dipole in this case. This is not, this is in line with what we see about the boiling point of this molecule at minus 79 degrees Celsius, and that that is very low. And so we were expecting no dipole, but there it is. All right, our last example here will be ammonia, minus 33. Now, ammonia is kind of interesting because minus 33 isn't that high, it's not that low. So our prediction here is that this is going to be a dipole, but that it's going to be fairly weak. So let's see how that works out. First of all, delta En. Uh, nitrogen is 3.04. Uh, hydrogen is 2.2, .2. so our electronegativity difference here is 0 0.84, which is between 0 0.5 and 1.7, so we have some polar bonds here. Not as polar as water was, but still we meet the requirement. Now the shape of ammonia is in three dimensions, so you have to use your imagination a little bit, but think of a tripod with the lone electron pair sitting on the top of the tripod, and that's what the shape of ammonia looks like. What we can see here is that as nitrogen pulls these electrons towards it, a lot of the pull, the pull that's within the plane, gets cancelled out, but there is some that's left over. If we imagine these as two components, then the vertical component is left over. There's not very much in the vertical component, but it's there. So this is asymmetric. And while there is significant cancellation, there isn't complete cancellation, and so this does form a dipole. It meets both requirements. But we're not that surprised that the dipole is weak because the polarity of the original bond wasn't that strong, and then, the and then the molecule has a degree of symmetry to it, even though it's asymmetric. And so those two things work together to make this dipole weak. So there's four examples of compounds and how we tell if something has a dipole formation. We have to get polar bonds using the electronegativity difference first. And then if we have polar bonds, we have to consider the shape to figure out if it's symmetric or asymmetric.